Hello and welcome back to Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch and co-host Calderness. This episode is 459. We're going to do a total breakdown of our IPF broadcast tournament. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero Clicks. Now, are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like 100 East of Deadpan Human. Over oh, okay, six yeah. people learn. think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure to check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Joining me, like always, in the studio is Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? I misheard you. I thought you said we were just going to have a total mental breakdown today, so mm. I'm already prepared. <laughs> nice. Uh, and Ian Eggleston. What's going on, Ian? Hello, hello. Just coming off the high of the IPF tournament. It's it's been a low day, but that's okay. That's all right. That's all right. We need a, a recovery day, I suppose. Guys, what made you happy this week? Yes. Uh, yeah, Simi, you get started. You always start with you. I you know, I went to like a concert earlier this week. It was a Tuesday. It was a long late Tuesday night for me, which made Wednesday really sucky. But uh saw Willie Carlisle, chance knows who that is. And did a good job. I can't remember the other guy's name, but it was also another Willie. So it oh. was the double Willie show. Nelson? No. That would have been <laughs> impressive. That it was actually been. Wiley. Yeah. Wiley Coyote. <laughs> <laughs> Willie and Wiley, yeah. Uh, but then, no, um, definitely like the high point after that, because the rest of the week was a pretty low point for me, working and stuff. But nice. the, the high point was definitely seeing how many people turned out for the IPF, seeing how much money we raised. Because, well, IPF... Uh, we haven't really been raising a lot of money. This was like our first actual drive. Mm-hmm. It's been open for people to donate, but this was the first actual drive, and then we're going to get into more stuff. So it was crazy seeing the number just skyrocket. Uh, we almost hit our halfway goal of what we posted. Right. So just kind of wild in that aspect. Yeah, it was awesome. Ian, what made you happy this week? Do we want to just go I over mean, the adventure? Yeah, I, I'll, I'll say, okay. you know, I think what made me the most happy in the IPF was uh, Simeon and I's country duo, <laughs> that which was is available else. in the live stream. Uh, shamelessly leaving that still posted. Yeah. <laughs> Might have to we might have to go through and tag like certain times or like split it time like, stamp it uh, yeah time stamp a nine hour event the ultimate uh, the ultimate fake out for the last game that needs to be time stamped <laughs> we'll see go into anyone, that a bit more but... see if anyone naturally catches it like, I'd be curious <laughs> um, yeah I mean I think our answers are all going to be the same the IPF live event it was a ton of fun it's really cool to see everybody come out see what was played and just. Yeah, be kind of dumb for nine hours straight. <laughs> it was pretty awesome. IPF tournament is also what made me happy this week, but I think we have to tell the story of the oh. arcade cabinet oh. on the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that absolutely has to be told. So it was around, what was it? Monday, you get a message from, was it your brother? Or no, did you uh, find it? Like, uh, I, I don't even use Facebook Marketplace, but randomly Facebook says like, Hey, you might be interested in this. And it was a like a Konami X-Men arcade cabinet. And it was only like three hundred dollars. I was like, oh. Well, okay, this I am I cool. am interested, <laughs> Facebook. This is spur of the moment. And so uh, you know, I told Calder about it. He's like, Yeah, let's do it. I was like, How much are we really gonna use this? You know, we're going back and forth. Ultimately we decide, like, well, we have to get it. I mean, it's just so cool. Yeah. And then, like ten minutes before we're about to pick it up. The seller says, oh, yeah, it already sold. And it's like, really? And at this point, you know, Calder and I have been robbed of all of our happiness. Yep. Like, we, it was dark. It was. You know, right before we filmed that mail call unboxing <laughs> video, that's when we found out the news. <laughs> so if you were curious about just total energy, <laughs> that's why. We just had our hearts broken. We did. So I hit Facebook Marketplace again. And believe it or not, there was another X-Men arcade cabinet. On Facebook for around the same price. On as Facebook bucks. in Omaha, around in the same Omaha, price. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, we did some back and forth, forth with the guy, and then the next day, Calder came home on his lunch break. We went out there and bought the cabinet. It was 
it was really, really tight too, because I work about 25 ish minutes away. I wasn't able, I have a two hour lunch break and I was like, this is like going to be a barely perfect window for me to go stop at home, get Ian, go to this guy, get the cabinet back to home, drop it off back to work. And then still like clock in like a minute or two before I'm supposed to clock in. And I got, I left work at 1215 and then, you know, how the adventure went, blah, 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 go home, get Ian, go to this guy, which was just like every Facebook marketplace transaction, very annoying to try to find out where he was yeah, in retrospect like, to his directions. He didn't give us an address. No. He was like, yeah, it's behind this building. It's like, oh. Except it wasn't. It wasn't, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> except it was on the was other side the of the street. street. <laughs> yep. So, like, you know, that building is on the north side of the street and you're on the south side of the street. Yeah, it's not really behind that building, is it? He just wheels it across it the was... street so that, like, you don't know where he lives. He's like, it's, um... Not this address, <laughs> yeah. but across well, the street from even, that address. Even dumber than that, he's like, oh, it's it's in a building with a sign that says yada yada. Then we went to that building. And it that wasn't said that whatever. building. <laughs> and he's whistling at us from across yeah, the street. Yeah. It's like, oh, oh, that, like, that building. Is that car yours? And he's like waving over there. And I'm like, that was nowhere near any of the places that you had previously stated, but okay. We go in there, we check it out. Ian and him struggle to peel off this huge label that's like yeah, met in the middle a, of the screen. They put a friggin' like 12 inch sticker on the screen of the cabinet, like anywhere else. Why? Yeah. Anywhere else. Anywhere else. So we're picking away at it. Everything works. We load it up into Calder's van. And then, yeah, that night we got some Pizza Hut. Yep. <laughs> you know, to it was, really live the dream. It was awesome. We put lights, like some like multicolor lights, in the arcade room now, oh, yeah. which is connected to our kitchen. Just absolutely hilarious. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we just did a, a '90s throwback to Pizza Hut. It was pretty. It was pretty special. It, it was really epic. was. It was something else. So. <laughs> Yeah, that's easily what made me happy the most this week, especially. And you, guys will, you guys will see that in a video, oh, yeah. for sure. Yeah. So the arcade cabinet, and then we also got experience, not only X-Men arcade, that I got experience for the first time. I got to relive one of my favorite arcade games, Captain America and the Avengers, and we got to play through that for, um, for the second time for me, playing through it all again. And then we got a whole brand new experience oh. with Avengers in oh. Galactic Storm, which is an okay comic book story and an garbage horrible fighting game it's a um, it's a game of all time for it's sure. it's so funny the <laughs> it's so the lineup is hilarious who you play as there's marvel vs. capcom-esque jump ins but not you but know not really but it's, not it's like everything that made marvel vs. capcom good and then just like make it look terrible and take away all the things that made it look made it good made it good yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> I love like so, like all the side specials. Everybody else like comes in, maybe they shoot something or whatever. Giant Man is specifically Hawkeye Giant Man, and then it's just oh, his wow. big arm comes in and he gives a squ- good old squeeze to oh, the opposing. Yeah. He As just, you do, he just squeezes him a couple of times. Doesn't punch him or anything. And the just arm squeezes is him. so hairy, so it's <laughs> so just like you're in this fighting game, and from like the side of one screen. This big, it goes, giant man! And then this hairy arm comes and <laughs> squeezes your opponent. It's pretty It's pretty awesome. So, yeah, this is like a 1v1 situation, not like a beat-em-up. Yeah, it's 1v1, one one, fighting like, game. fighting game. Oh, With, yeah. like, the worst graphics ever. So, yeah, guys, check out Avengers in Galactic Storm. Yeah. Not even into the Galactic Storm. No, just... in Galactic Storm. It's Where beautiful. are they? In Galactic Storm. <laughs> oh, Duh. yeah, yeah. Where's that? That's off, like, 49th. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, but yeah, really cool cabinet. It's, it is awesome. It is not a waste of money. Oh, absolutely not. It adds to the house. I love looking at it. Would period. you say it matters that it's an original cabinet? Or... Yeah, it doesn't like, matter. Oh, yeah, you know, like, uh, I'm just like an original gamer, so like... <laughs> You know, the fact that it's like a recreation cabinet, it's like, I'm just not that into it. Yet. I'd probably make it myself. I'd probably just yeah. do it like, myself. Give me like a Raspberry Pi. Like, I could make it myself. <laughs> Oh, jeez. All right. <laughs> there has been basically no Heroclix news at all this week, so we're just going to go ahead and jump into talking about the International Player Foundation tournament that we had on Saturday. All right, guys. We live streamed all of Saturday to get this tournament ready. So we have four matches and then the top eight, the top top eight matches were all live streamed as well so if people don't necessarily want to listen to all of this they can go ahead and just check that out and watch the uh natural beauty of that happen 
But we do have the top eight. We can go ahead and give you a rundown of their teams. We had, I believe, 20 players, really kind of 19 players playing this tournament. So it was a solid tournament for online. Uh, just going from, oh, we'll go last to first, then we'll talk about some teams here. So we had Josh Kyle, Dennis Ryan, Bill DeRocher, Joshua O'Shields, Luke Remnants, uh, and I have probably screwed that up, Stephen C., Chris S., David C., Joe G., yeah, the Joe G. was there, Jack Pashley, Ethan Briggs, Kyle, and this is now top eight, so bottom of top eight, and this is the final standing, Kyle P., Zeph B., Eric A., Andrew Wilson, Emily Michelle, uh, Lucas Holland, LH, as you would say, your initials, Paul C., and then Joe Avs were, <laughs> were in this. Uh, so Joe won the day. His record was 6-1. and one. He took only one loss, and that was to Lucas in Swiss. And I believe the end, they fought four. sometime in top four. Yeah, they, and then, they fought round three, and then, yeah, they fought in top four. Yeah. yeah. So that was pretty incredible. I was a big fan of seeing everything. So just going over Andrew Wilson's team, just real quick through these teams. Only oh. only two maps, by the way. Morlock Tunnels, negative zone. No other ones. He was playing the 2x2 two two blocking times 3 for his objects. He had Scarab, Darkhold, Magim Jaspers, the ultimate nullifier, Molecule Man, Prodigy, Radioactive Clay, Commissioner, Moira McTaggart, Plastic Man, Carnage, and another Scarab. I'm not going to get into his tarot. He had a bunch of sideline game elements for Magim to use. Ian, you know this team. Give us a quick rundown on what the strategy of this team was. Oh, gosh, guys. This what team. What we're doing on the team? This oh, team she's is lynch so pin. brutal. She's linchpin. So Simeon. brutal. So, you know, typically this team wants to go to Morlock Tunnels. There are situations where you do want to hit negative zone. Uh, don't need to go entirely into that. But primarily you're going to Morlock Tunnels. You're placing your blocking. So your 2x2 two two blockings in a way where it's also in front of the other blocking that's in front of your starting area. There's also some walls. So your team is essentially completely, like, cut off from interaction. <laughs> Uh, then you have Molecule Man to throw up more barrier. You have Mad Gym for more free barrier. And on top of that, you have your team positioned in a way so that the Scarabs are like diagonal from one another. And then on the other diagonal, you have Mad Gym equipped with the ultimate nullifier and you have Prodigy. Next to Prodigy is Moira. Moira can give a or take a power action to give Prodigy a rally die. Mm, okay. Prodigy has a rally ability where he can replace any single D6 roll with a 5. And the way the ultimate nullifier works is that you choose a number, take a power action, pick somebody within six, and line of fire. But with Scarab, they just need to be equipped in within six. So you pick them, uh, you say four, you roll a die. If you get above a four, you don't need to use Prodigy's Rally. If you don't roll a four, you just replace it with Prodigy's Rally. And now, without making an attack roll, just by taking a power action, your Scarab is just dealing four damage. And because it's not damage from an attack, this goes through stop clicks. So essentially what this team looks to do is they barrier, 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 wait for you to come across, and then they nullify you, and it's, it's just brutal. So that's the general strategy of the team. There's some other cool things you can do, like they do have the radioactive clay, so that while you're making your advance to this team, Scarab can hit you with uh, some 10-range mind control, see through everything, but you could characters. Have potentially have a Scarab mind control move somebody up, and then the other Scarab mm -hmm. ultimate yeah. nullify yeah. them the same turn. It's it's absolutely brutal. Like you get to him and it's like, okay, I'm gonna double nullify you. This and is a much cheaper and more effective version of the uh, carnage. Oh, our carnage idea, carnage, uh, yeah. yeah, build <laughs> where it requires you cheating carnage onto an X Men team. Yeah, but carnage gets to do six. He <laughs> does get to potentially yeah. do six. Yeah, which is way funnier. <laughs> but yeah, brutal team. Uh, next up, these are not in order of top eight. Now that I see it, so but this is third place. This is third place. So Lucas Holland here. He's playing World's Finest at 60 with the Utility Belt. He's playing Tony Stark, the Sakarian Iron Man at 50 with Cloak Levitation. He's playing the, what is it, Chainsaw Wonder Woman, Magim Jaspers, Venom Magneto with the Sinestro Core Ring on him, I believe. The Commissioner. Then he's got Darkhold. And then he has the little 20-point Alan Scott Green Lantern legacy with the Green Lantern Ring. Pretty simple copy pasted team from Joe Abs, I'd say. There are this some is cool like tricks a, this team can do. Say, though. The it's true. Biggest change is that he's running Wonder Woman. Yes. And um, why don't we jump over to Joe's real quick? Oh, he's right there. Yeah, the difference is Wonder Woman and Sky Tyrant. Like Joe's running Sky Tyrant. Uh, Lucas went for the more defensive option of Wonder Woman for the revive. And then Lucas also has the 20 point Legacy Green Lantern who comes free with the ring. Joe went with Chip, 
So they both get those ring utility figures. Yep. But, uh, you know, the Legacy Green Lantern obviously has some more defensive option with the uh, the ability to roll a single D6 and increase the defense by half the result. Right. Chip is, I would say, like less defensive, more utility. Like he's able to carry Joe's team up. Uh, typically he was dropping things like the glove to get plus two defensive okay. range. On top of that, if he had the utility belt out, uh, he could smoke cloud as well for free. So he was just a massive defensive range. But typically what they were both doing is they would actually uh, swap the utility belt, which was free to equip on World's Finest, for something like the Waldo Arms or the Emotional Modifier. Okay. So essentially getting a 10-point free equipment value with the Mad Gym. Really, really smart. And then on top of that, you can do the same thing with Green Lantern. Like if Green Lantern needed to switch to the you know Darkhold, Emo Mod, whatever, you can do that, and it's all free because they're starting, these with, uh, starting the game with these for free. So, And I believe they played pretty similar maps as well. Daily Bugle, Layers, Layers on, on Haunted, Haunted Pier, Pier. And, and... Oh, never mind. No, not at all. <laughs> totally <laughs> different. That's okay. But basically, they're big reach teams. They've got good defense. They've got really good offense. Really, really good reach. Yeah. So... Lots of utility swap with the Mad Gym, obviously. Mad Gym is a really high skill ceiling piece, and both of these players, uh, I think, are getting maximum value from him every time. Yeah. It's, it's just crazy. Another thing that Joe Safa did that I thought was interesting was he started Mad Jim with the Captain Carter shield. And so he's only at 18, but he does actually have a couple like low defense pieces. Like Commissioner is only a 16. Venom Magneto is only a 16. Mm -hmm. He does have traded ESD as well. So now Venom Magneto is a 20 from range with the help of Mad Jim. So that's something cool, something different. But for the most part, like I would say that these teams are both very just run of the mill, non theme. Yeah. I'm gonna come mess you up. Yeah, it's just and it's a lot of like good stuff that we've seen throughout. Like, you've got your best TK, you've got Sakari and Iron Man, you have one of the best close attackers in Sky Tyrant. Um, I think Wonder Woman being able to just like map wide, say that person doesn't die this turn, is pretty it's crazy. Good. Yeah, especially when you when utilized with Sakari and Iron Man, uh, the way that triggers is just kind of nuts. Uh, they yeah. both only took one loss throughout the tournament. Uh, Josafa took a loss to, to Lucas each other. And Swiss, and then yeah. in the top uh, four, Lucas took his loss to Josafa. So obviously, both know the team pretty well. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. It just came to like I guess dice rolls and whoever adapted the best. I don't know. Um, I would say so. We didn't actually watch that one yeah. the second time. I mean, in a way. Uh, next up. Emily, her team, so she had Apocalypse at the big 145 in the Sword Bear trade, which is insane. Genesis played a 35. Wonder Woman, 50, so Chainsaw Wonder Woman again. She's got Cloak of Levitation on Wonder Woman. She's got Felix Faust, and then Star Sapphire with the Ring. Pretty straightforward team, but she yeah. just played it really well. Destroyer on the sideline as Destroyer well. Destroyer on the side, huge. And then Terrain, lots of blocking. Uh, presumably to help her with like an advance. I think what we saw from her is she actually put it in front of her opponent to kind of stop their mobility a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if she did that every game. I mean, obviously, Star Sapphire, great value piece with the free ring. Stop sign's amazing. Faust, I mean, I think he's like the he's second Faust. best piece in the game. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, Apoc, Genesis, both these figures are so hard to kill. And then you throw on a Wonder Woman revive, and it's just like... When they all have well, that one game where we watched, uh, yeah, was it Josh? And he like killed uh, Genesis, got her all the way down to stop, couldn't kill her there, uh, did kill her then next turn, and then had to fight her again, get her all the way back down to stop. I was like, wow. Plus, Genesis has three rollouts on that last click with Super Sensitive Shape Change because the Morlock Sword, and then also the Blades roll out if it's close attacks. It was just like, goodness gracious. Yeah. Genesis and everything for 35 Genesis points is insane. Scored a bunch of points in that game just by hitting stop clicks and deleting the, objects. Yeah. Mystics and yeah, deleting and objects. She's healing yeah. off of them, too, yep. with the steel energy. So, like, I mean, from what we saw, it seemed like Genesis got more value than the 150-point APOC because most of the Honestly, time yeah. you square up against that APOC. I mean, if I'm on the other side of that, I look at that and I go, I'm never going to attack this. Yeah, I don't want to no. deal with that. I'm not taking Mystics. I'm not losing my object. And then you're also potentially calling in Destroyer. It just, the ew. game's pretty like nasty because yeah. it has three, what, three uh, Mystics. Is Felix mystical? I yes, mean, he mystical, is. Star Sapphire is also gets Mystics from so the ring. So it's literally just Wonder Woman's the only one that you can safely attack and yeah. take da damage from. 
And you know, another thing about this is a lot of people have said that like tent poles aren't necessarily playable at the moment because stop sign can just lock you out of the game. You know, you barrier around them, shut off their improved movement. But I think Emily, you know, she kind of proved she did, that she did you well, can't get away really with well. That. We did see that happen to. But she was fourth place, correct? Fourth place, yes. Yeah, I can't remember who she was playing against. Um, was it Paul? Somebody else was running. It was Paul. Okay. Yeah. Um, she was playing against Paul, and he did stop sign barrier APOC in, mm -hmm. and yep. she had like destroyer from the sideline. So like, those were her two final characters, and it was just kind of nuts that. Even though, like, technically what she paid for was, like, completely locked out of the game, she was able to keep, like, going forward with uh, Destroyer. Yeah. Next up, we have Eric Adams' team. I thought this team was pretty wild. Uh, he's got a Detective Fiend team, which is hilarious. So he's playing that Martian Manhunter from Batman at 75. Joe Mullane also at 75. Chase Fred at 40. World's Finest at 60. Plastic Man at 20. And then Commissioner at 25. He's got the Green Lantern Ring Utility Belt. And then Captain Carter's Shield is on Fred because he's got to defend. Uh, he's got just... Yeah, he's got so three different mystery cards, too. So a string of cat burglaries everybody likes. Murder in the City Endearing and then Stake Out as well. I like Murder in the City Endearing. It's really, really solid. But you do have to have a Green Lantern person to, to use that, I believe. So it's awesome, though. This was just a hilarious team. And also seeing it get top eight, a detective theme team, is really, really funny. What's that Martian Manor team up do again? Uh, it gives everybody on your team outsiders. outsiders. That's right. Yeah. yeah. It's okay. good. It's really good. So everybody outsiders and everybody, it was strong against things like Sakari and Iron Man, et cetera, et cetera. This Anything team has stats. Like a surprising amount of staying power with more than likely the free support from Fred. If your opponent that is playing is good. a mystical or monster piece, which, I mean, looking at these teams, just about everybody was. <laughs> yep. Uh, so Fred has free support. Joe Mullane has two stop clicks. Martian Manhunter, you can't target. World's Finest is just, I mean, he's just a pest. He's so annoying to deal with. Plastic Man can just pop outside the game and be an object. So you're yeah, not literally, him. literally can't kill him. Yeah. And then Commissioner has Mastermind for his whole team, and you know the Rookie Pog is just insane value. Plus uh, Destroyer. Uh, this one probably not coming in as often, but at the same time, yeah. it's like there's so much equipment in the game that you're probably being attacked by somebody equipped. Yeah. But I love. I think this might be my favorite team in top eight. It was really hilarious. Was really to fun. See it make top eight. Yeah. Like really, really cool. Zeph, okay. Sorry, I was like, this is a wild uh, break. Just Zeph's build sheet. Okay, so Zeph's team, what was he running? He had Blackheart with Soul Sword. Uh, then he had Wonder Woman, so the Chainsaw Wonder Woman again. He had Felix Faust. He had Raven. Double Saturnine. Then he, he had starter that... set Raven. Starter set Raven. Okay, right. yeah, big difference there. Um, and then he had... Green Lantern, Lacey card, Green Lantern, the Green Lantern ring. Also destroy on the sideline. Starter set Raven, letting him get that red Raven in uh, when she dies, which is really cool. We didn't play, we didn't watch any of Zeph's games, I don't believe. But it's a solid team. Blackheart was this yeah. mystical theme team. Yeah, yeah, it's mystical theme bonus, so pretty solid. He's got Game Show for his small map, and he's got Morlock Tunnels and Latverian Village for normal maps. Oh, he is using got... the map bonus as well for Latverian yeah. Village, so yep. that gives him access to a little more Mastermind. Yeah. But I think the general philosophy around this team is like double Saturnine is going to make it really hard to hit. She's changing roles. Blackheart with the Soul Sword, he's hitting stops and then healing off of them. And Death Metal Wonder Woman is, you know, reviving Blackheart when he dies. And Ugh. presumably Blackheart is like never taking an that action token. That is miserable. Yeah. Because he's just KOing a guard, healing, removing tokens. So, I mean, every turn. Yeah. This Blackheart is probably just running rampant. And honestly, like Faust plus double Saturnine plus the Green Lantern modification to defense, like. You are going to need some crazy rolls, and we'll see if you get to re-roll it. And after you do re-roll it, maybe I can modify it to make it miss. Like, yeah, this is uh, this is. I really like this team. I think it's really solid, but uh, particularly nasty. Would not bring this to a casual event. That's for sure. No, Ooh, gross. <laughs> Absolutely not. Next up, got Kyle P here in X Men theme team. So he's running that again. Apocalypse Genesis, both their lower point line. Genesis, no sword. Interesting. Carnage Silver Surfer at 50. Venom Thanos at 50. Sky Tyrant, 50. Black Bone of Omduat on Sky Tyrant. Carnage, Venom Magneto. And then also running a Spirit of the Game, which is super interesting. So Spirit of the Game 
gives him what a plus one action if it's part of a theme team, yeah, I believe. Yes. Yeah, so that's helping out. And this Destroyers is an X Men theme. This is an X Men theme, thanks to Genesis yeah. and Apocalypse. With uh, so it's Carnage. It all of these, basically, all his big heavy hitters: Venom, Magneto, Venom, Thanos, Sky Tyrant, Carnage, Silver Surfer. His like beef of his team is all just keyword cheated on, thanks to Apocalypse and Genesis. Which is really funny. And yeah, yeah, spirit of the game because it doesn't break theme because it's a bystander. So that is hilarious. I didn't see this game. I don't think we saw any of his games no. played. But it's a really funny team. But it's again, I hate Apocalypse and Genesis for all this dumb keyword cheating and whatnot. <laughs> Carnage Surfer, does he have blades? No, he just has like uh, he RCE does he's with Steel Energy. He's oh, that's right. The, the, red, red symbiote, the Red Symbiote. So he does have blades. So that'll do that. Sky Tyrant also getting a rollout. It's hilarious. Giant Carnage having that rollout. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, the Venom Thanos play uh, did not expect to see him in this tournament. He is pretty interesting though. If he hits his leadership, he can hand out like probability control. Uh, I believe like CCE. I, I think you're primarily doing it for the probability control, but he hands it out to everyone who shares a keyword within range. And so at 50 points, he does have a stop click, so he's not going down like super easy. He also has some giant reach three later in his dial, but uh, I think primarily you're playing him for his trait, you know, trying to take advantage of that, hand out some powers. Like yeah. he can also hand out shape change or steel energy, so maybe you can heal up your force a bit. Also has destroyer prime on the sideline because why not? Why not? Right? Yeah. Go. I think besides what Joe and Lucas's teams, everybody else is running destroyer. Is, yeah, that yeah, sounds, that sounds right. I think there was. I remember seeing one team that just didn't have a prime whatsoever. I can't remember. Oh, there was a team like that. I can't remember what team it was. Or no, uh, there was a team that was running uh, Iron Spider. Yeah, Iron Chris, Spider. Chris Salazar, I believe, yeah, was running Iron Spider. So there, yeah. All right, one of my favorite teams slash favorite players of the day, Paul Cote here. He's running the Scarlet Witch, the Darkhold at 75. Tony Stark, the Sakari, and Iron Man at 50 with Cloak Levitation. Kazar at 50. Kesar at 50, excuse me. Maggot at 40. Chip at 35. Emo Mod, which is on Kesar. Professor X at 25 for some swap. And then Carnage at 10 points. He had a few weird swaps. I don't noticed i never noticed a ton of them the tempo stepford cuckoo jubilee you know big girl jubilee and then the floaty deadpool he did have other world starlight citadel just in case for jubilee here and then he had the small dockyard map which is one small map the fountain of Asgard being his other big map i like this team he can easily with kazar he can get scarlet witch across the map on a small map to just drop something down there with plus with a chip TK and whatnot. So again, lanterns, they add so much like utility to the board. We've seen a lantern in the majority of teams here that could like cheat one in at least. And then he's got a lot of alpha stuff, you know, Scar and Iron Man can get up in your face. Mega gets up in your face. Chip can drop something in your face. Kazar moving up is great. And Scarlet Witch just starting to lock down a team. He just did a great job, I think, playing this team. We watched him play a few times. Of note, he also played no tarot cards, and he did really well in this tournament just by being a good player, didn't need any of that outside you stuff. don't need tarot cards. Yeah, if that's ever a concern about you thinking, oh, it's really expensive, I don't have what I need for whatever, you really don't need them necessarily. But they are a help. You don't need them. Something uh, that is interesting about this team, I think, is that... Uh, you know, with the sideline size changing to from 9 to 6, previously what we saw, we saw this like with Worlds builds, like on Saul's winning build, he played about 90 points of X-Men stuff to swap into. And you can see Paul cut it down to 65 with Maggot Professor X. So yeah. some examples of what he did swap into, we did see him leave in Professor X and Maggot because Professor X does have like an 8 range out with and leadership. He's not yeah. horrible. Yeah. But uh, switching into, yeah, if he, if he does win map, he can go Jubilee and then Stepford Cuckoo. Cuckoo? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he Which, yeah. typed in a little weird. Uh, you can leave in what you have. And then, you know, if you were to go against a range-heavy team, you do have Chip, who can carry eight with sidestep. And then you can play the uh, Deadpool with the floaties mm -hmm. to prevent some ranged attacks as well. So he's got a defensive option. He's got an if-I-win-map option. And then he's just got a general good play option with Maggot. Like, Maggot is... I mean, he's free damage, he's prop, yeah. he's sidestep. Like, Maggot is, is just crazy good for his point range. I don't know how more people aren't playing Jubilee. With all the terrain, with all the barrier, with everything you in know, the world, Jubilee just being like, go away! They've kind of written her off, I think, because it's like, well, I'm not going to build for theme. 
because I want Sakari and Iron Man, I want Faust, I want Chip, right? Sure, yeah. And so they're just like, well, why would I, you know, play Jubilee? I think Paul's build is really smart, like, not committing super heavy to the X-Men, but still having it as an option. Yeah. Because even if he doesn't switch out, if he was somehow prevented, like, he's really not missing out on much. No. Like, leaving Professor X in, like, that outwit could be crucial. I'm not saying it's, like, the best 25 points you can get, but it's certainly not bad. With everything else the team is capable of. Yeah. What do you think tempo's on, like, the sideline for? Do you think it's the plus three? Plus three or speed, you think it's right? Scarlet Witch. So okay. Kazar could take a move action, and then if tempo is adjacent to Scarlet Witch, Kazar says they can move half their speed value. So, you half. so half plus ten plus and a half, three. go to five, plus three. So with a chip TK, you'd be looking at a 12-square rune marker. <laughs> pretty good. That's yeah. pretty nasty. On top of that, um, maybe... That, like, super maybe sense with chip? negation... Yeah, you could. Yeah, if you, you wanted could to like bomb squat something, really move, move up thirteen up. squares, yeah. right? Yeah, eight plus eight three sidestep. Yeah, because I mean, after yeah. that, chip can drop something, maggot can drop stuff. There is like that potential. Yeah, and then on top of this, like the carnage retail just sitting in the starting area. I love that because it's like, come deal with this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna come rune marker you. You kind of have to come to me. And yeah, like dealing with Sakari and Iron Man, nobody wants to do that. And we kind of saw that, like Sakari and Iron Man did a lot of work for Paul throughout the day. There's yeah. no question about that. Uh, and, you know, it is wild to me that in the top eight we only see one Scarlet Witch. Like, Scarlet Witch has it is won wild. Like, every major event. She is, you know, we weren't, we weren't saying, I think Simeon said it yesterday, where it's like, there's Silver Bullets and then there's Scarlet Witch, yeah. who's like, what, a Silver <laughs> 12 gauge? I mean, just, yeah, like, <laughs> a, like a cannon. She's like, yeah. <laughs> she just destroys, like, tears down, like, everything Heroclix has ever built. A silver carpet bomb. There yeah. we go. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. I mean, close to it. Because, I mean, she does hurt her own team, but, man, she, when in the right hands, she is just nasty to have to fight against. Yeah. I, th- I think the other really common thing across, oh, is it six or seven of the teams in top eight? Almost every team is running a ring or multiple rings from Batman Team Up. Like, you just cannot underlook the value that these constructs give. The stop sign, yeah. the boot for free knockback, the chainsaw for, like, a last chance comeback, the mitt to protect from range. Like, yeah. it just goes on and on and on. And the spotlight for winning games. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, don't call the spotlight in. But seriously, the rings, you cannot discount them, especially when they're coming in free on Chip, on Legacy Green Lantern, yeah. on Joe Mullen we saw, which, seriously, it shout looks, out that guy. So cool. It looks like every team ran a ring, some form or the other, than uh, Kyle P. Kyle P was the only one in top eight that did not have a ring on his team or a Lantern person. So, yeah, seven out of eight is pretty dang good. It just shows, again, how much utility the Lanterns have. Constructs not taking up a sideline spot, coming from outside the game and whatnot. They're just they're so strong. They all do such great. They they all almost all of them all do such great things. <laughs> uh, spotlight. Um, but besides that, it is pretty incredible. But that was the IPF tournament. We do have all the games live streamed. They are on our live video. Also, in between games, we tried not to let it interrupt yeah, games, but we were doing talk some. About that. We were doing some fun <laughs> stuff, and this was again a, a huge highlight of my day. Some of the time was doing the fun live stream where you donate in a certain amount of money and we'll do something wacky. Maybe we will, gosh, what, what were even our normal ones? There were some wacky we, ones that happened. We though. didn't have like a lot listed. Yeah. Because this is like much. Kind of, this was more of a stream about like the games and the tournament, but. So yeah, let's. Just as intermissions, we did have. I think, um, I think we had karaoke listed. So someone did do a normal karaoke, $10 right? $10 I sang a song from InSync. And again, I'd literally never heard it before. So it was very off uh, key. Tempo was all over the place. <laughs> it's S- beautiful. Simeon did one of my personal favorites, and that was for twenty dollars. You ate a chocolate chip cookie topped with ranch. Mm. Uh, so mm. yeah, we got on the topic of we were arguing on stream about how ranch doesn't. Yes, go with they everything. were they were getting really mad at me. So they were shrimp. Yeah, and I was dessert. like, oh heck yeah, dude, some shrimp. Um, but it only had that uh, whatever sauce that I, I'm not particularly oh, fond of. you know, the thing you dip <laughs> shrimp in? Yeah, that, so that whatever sauce. I, I went and got some ranch so I could dip my shrimp the way I like to have my shrimp, and that's dipped in ranch. Because, you know, ranch goes with everything. 
And then Simeon says, yeah, does it go with a cookie or like something like yeah. that? Some, I don't know if you even, maybe, I don't even know if you prompted that. I don't that. know if we, I don't know how far we went, but, but we were somebody definitely was drawing like, up suggestions. And then somebody was like, $20 to make Simeon eat a ranch cookie. And, and so, then uh, he did that. Yeah. We, I did that. He and not then, only uh, did that, like, Simeon covered this thing in ranch. So much Took ranch. a bite, and then he's like, yeah, that that wasn't good enough. Tops off the rest of the cookie with more ranch. There wasn't much of the cookie left. That, that was a big bite. It was covered, though. It was. It was uh, probably close to like 50 50 on a ranch to cookie <laughs> ratio. Yeah. I don't recommend it. It's kind of oh, jarring. It's so the, the flavor combination's not a good one. It's not something I would recommend. Uh, but then Calder and Ian both also yes. had to partake in mm. the ranch cookie because that became one of the donation tiers afterwards. And how, and how did that happen, Simeon? Uh, my sister tuned in and she decided to punish you too. <laughs> for whatever how did reason. it become a donation tier, though? Oh, I just... In- <laughs> I lowered the bar and uh, added it <laughs> as a permanent <laughs> fixture. Um, so, that yeah, that was one. Um, we did have do an impression for like five bucks but i don't think anyone tagged that one uh we did have a couple people just chime in with like random stuff so after that uh, i know matt reed wanted us to do something physical since we were kind of limited with our space just like for this certain setup um he opted to have us do back slaps for fifty dollars for all three of us to get get hyped go do a lift back slap that was pretty fun uh, I got slapped three times, by the way, uh, oh, that's right. for whatever yeah, reason. Yeah. Well, Calder needed um, a warm-up slap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, apparently. Ian was wearing a sweatshirt, so his slaps probably didn't hurt whatsoever. No, they really didn't. <sighs> what, was a, what was another one? Uh, was it all songs after that? Uh, I think yeah, it was all think, songs. After think after you and I ate a ranch cookie, Ian, I think that was, it was that all songs. That ranch cookie, like... So you just instantly, you know, taste like the... once once you accept it for what it is. I think you can oh. just eat it. That's what I did, and I was like, okay, that's that's not too I, bad. My body was rejecting it. Like you know, I'm eating shrimp all day. I'm having a good time, and then all of a sudden, I got to do this. You take a bite into the chocolate chip cookie, you get the crumbly taste, then you bite into a chocolate chip, and you're met with <laughs> the sour <laughs> punctuation of this like creamy ranch sauce. It was. I don't know. If you watch the video, it was I was so actually good. Like, trying not to vomit. We, it was so bad. Uh, as Miles <laughs> said, we went to a, a level, the final level of heaven yeah. on, <laughs> on that ranch cookie. It was really, really funny. For those of you who don't know, heaven is tiered off. And <laughs> of course Chocolate it is. chip cookies with ranch are found at That's only the top. The peak. That is purely the top level of heaven. <laughs> so... I think my favorite donation, hands down, like without question, was Miles asked for a a freestyle from the country workings of Simeon and Ian, <laughs> and we did a we did a little country rendition. We found towards the end of the stream when we were both you know having a little fun. We definitely <laughs> we found a um, a copyright free, just like yeah. generic. It, I can't remember. It was like sad country something something. It was like the it was like description eight was so different weird. descriptions. Yeah, it was like everything country, and we hadn't heard it yet, so we just put it on, and you know, our hearts and souls went to work. You and guys, it was, it was, it was really funny. As a, as a country music fan, you guys really hit the beat real well. <laughs> I couldn't hear the music when I was listening to it, so it was really hard to. Oh yeah, right. Um, <laughs> but it was really it was really good, and then I had to. Yeah, here it is, somewhere in here. Uh, I had to do a few different songs, and then <laughs> Simeon had to sing Triple H's entrance music. Yeah, which Motorhead's was good. Uh, Time to Play the Game, or The Game, whatever yeah. it's called. <laughs> whatever. So the, the stream got copyright, copyright struck because several karaoke renditions. Several. But not that uh, that really matters. Thankfully, the country music, because it was copyright free, but NSYNC didn't like it. Oh, Basketball. Yeah, we could oh, forget basketball, basketball by Curtis Blow. <laughs> yeah. That I also dissed Calder in. Yeah. I threw my own ad. There were some there. massive disses against the uh, against the K man here. Not not very cool. Calder hates basketball. <laughs> he hates centers. He hates forwards. Yeah. He hates all the players. Yeah. Calder hates cards. He even hates Hero Clicks cards. <laughs> There's some good freestyling then, yeah. that happened for sure. It was And you know, you guys can expect all of this to come back when 
Oh, all of this and yeah. much more. Much more. Uh, sans the Heroclix gameplay. There will be almost zero Heroclix gameplay, likely, in our uh, next live stream. But yeah, we are going to close out. Not really close out, but we're going to do one last big push for the IPF with a uh, another long form live long stream. form live stream where we're just doing wacky stuff whatever you guys want to donate to so things and that let us know we and we'll do it on stream um some things that like I, I remember being popular from the previous live stream where we were doing this were obviously like physical challenges and punishment chair and shots are big chair um, shots pretty big and then a, at a certain tier certain donation tier you'll get to come on to the stream for a little bit mm -hmm. maybe play bad sam maybe just say hi do a shout out whatever um, so that was like one that several people did. We actually had to end the stream because a lot of people just wanted to donate. And so yeah. like, that's what kept it going for way too long is we had like a backlog of people. Still, we were, were raising money. To, yeah. We were still raising money for charity. So it's like, I don't remember what time we actually finished that. It was like 2 a.m. It was so Because we late. started at like I, 6 or 7. I wasn't there for that. I like went out. I was hanging out with my friends. I saw you guys went live, so I popped in and said, what's up? At like, I don't know, seven, eight o'clock. I came back home from the bars and I was like in bed and I just like pulled up YouTube and saw you guys are still live. I'm just like, what? <laughs> so I start, started texting Calder like gifts from an unreleased video. <laughs> yeah. And like, I was just like, how are you guys even functioning still? Oh, that was that was another thing that uh, was kind of popular, but we did do some unreleased stuff. I think we'll make that like a at certain donation, not donation tiers. Oh, like a a cat, um, like a benchmark type. Yeah, yeah. If, there's if, we, a reach, if we reach this point, we'll show something off. Uh, yeah, we're working Hopefully on some stuff. We yeah. can make that happen. We've got some fun stuff in store for that. Yeah, um, we really do. We really want to put like a if the community gets us to this mark then like something awesome will be released or shown, whatever. Um, but we've got some stuff that we can work with. And then, of course, the biggest thing is just putting it on the viewers themselves to like come up with fun. Yeah. Stuff. It's it's also just your own creativity can help add to the stream. That's, that's what, honestly, that's flexible. what the ranch cookie came from. That's what the freestyle. We might have to make freestyle its own its own uh, tier. Like, tier I'll, going I'll forward. I'll do it all night. Yeah. <laughs> Ian, Ian was throwing out some good freestyle. Cooking. Sivian was throwing out some, uh, I mean, freestyle. Um, no, some okay no, freestyle. Stop. I was Sibian, more of the hype. Sivian was my glue. Yeah. I was, <laughs> was more, of the, glue? more of the hype man for uh, Ian's Ian's. Oh yeah. gosh. Uh, anyway, guys, um, the giveaway stream slash hangout stream slash donation stream, whatever you want to call it, we are planning to do that later in April. Currently, we're just trying to pick a date that's the best for like the viewers because we do have some events coming up obviously the rlc event uh the hunts huntington's event early may and then pj's event is mid-april as well so we are just kind of looking for a sweet spot i think preemptively we're looking at like april 28th or 29th because that's friday saturday i think that'd be a good time so yeah. you know and we'd probably start sometime like afternoon late afternoon and you know we'll just Keep ripping, but we're gonna, uh, we're gonna go until the money stops flowing, baby. <laughs> so something that we do have to share in regards to some details on that is, if you didn't know, one of the IPF prizes it was taken by first place was a two by two colossal carnage. Oh yeah, we will have another one of those for giveaway, maybe auction. We don't quite know yet, but we'll have another one of those. I've gotten in contact with a lot of different players who are sending us more donations for figures to give away or auction. You know, maybe we'll do some fun stuff with people who donate. We'll get thrown in a hat. We'll draw from that. We don't have exact details on this yet. It's, it's you know, by the, what is it, the seed of our pants? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll definitely have, like, a big post covering it all. But it is exciting. It's something, if you've been paying attention to us for over a year, I guess, a year and a half. I don't remember when episode 400 came up. I was around February or March last year. Was it? Okay, yeah, so it was yeah. early on in the year. If you've been paying attention to us for a little while, you've probably seen us live stream a few times. It can get a little crazy, but especially when we do donation tiers, it gets pretty wacky. Oh, the big guns come out. And I, I hope yes. you're not hoping that there's like a bun bunch of Heroclix content, because there will be some, but the majority of it will the just be us interacting with chat. 
if you know a listener or someone in the chat wants to say hey talk about this talk about that you know if, if we see any good suggestions for discussion we'll probably use those as well you don't really have to pay to suggest anything to discuss but there's just but no can. there's no guarantee that we will actually <laughs> talk about it though you can just throw stuff out there if you want but you could you can you can actually donate and we'll 100 percent discuss it you know so We'll so, see. Yeah. Talking about unreleased videos, though, and other projects, there will be enough HeroClix content, but there will just be a lot of physical pain or karaoke or just silly Food goofiness. Food challenges. Food <laughs> challenges, yeah. Yeah, the Ooh. only mukbang HeroClix channel that exists. <laughs> Doctor Strange Supreme. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> that's a That's a... Yeah. An unreleased, yet to be unreleased deep <laughs> cut from two hours ago. An idea from yeah, two hours ago. <laughs> Oh, can't let them know our trade secrets, no, but sorry. everything's just an idea sorry. from two hours ago. <laughs> Lots of hints. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it is important to just say we raised about $1,000 with this tournament yeah. for the yeah. IPF. We got pushed up to $1,415. That's a weird way of saying it. $1,415. Yep. <laughs> and, I mean, it was way more successful than I thought it would be. People... Yeah. Uh, Really got behind the idea. It was really cool to kind of finally see that because, as Simeon had mentioned earlier, we had gotten a few bulk donations, but honestly, like, we hadn't really had the community chip in as much. And now that I think people have kind of snowballed it, I think people are really seeing the idea of it. And, you know, if you haven't watched the submission video from Edison Lee on the IPF Facebook page, that is a player that you could directly help by donating to this foundation. And whether it's a dollar, five dollars, whatever it is, Every single penny matters when it comes to this. Yeah. Like, any amount of money can help. And to give you guys an idea of, like, why we set 3000 as the initial goal, a plane ticket from Singapore, we looked this up, that's where Edison Lee was from, it is about 1100 to $1,300 for that flight. A flight from Italy, we talked with Andrea last year, he said that his flight was right around $700, and that was on, like, the super cheap end. So, you know, once again, you're looking at 1000 again. So with flights alone, if we could hit 2,000, 2,500, we can fly these players out and we can move that cost of, you know, traveling around the world to more of, I'm going on a vacation to play Hero Clicks. We right. can make it a lot more manageable for these people. And seriously, if you're going to Worlds yourself, or even if you're not, seeing these people there and changing really their lives, like giving them an opportunity for people who have played the game their whole life to play in the, you know, the biggest stage, the biggest tournament. It's so cool, and I like I use this anecdote a lot, but I know if I was living outside the U.S., watching those world streams and videos, oh, it'd be painful. And knowing like, oh, I probably won't ever get these yeah. con exclusives. Like that too, yeah. Knowing like I'll I'll likely never have access to like the convention exclusives at like the the cheap end, like the opening day price or whatever, and then also just never being able to participate in like the highest end of competitive or just like. Literally the biggest gathering of HeroClix players in one place. Mm -hmm. Like I think at period. Eight, like yeah, period. Yeah, I don't think it. You know, not only like the hotel lobby, which would be awesome. Like if you could also stay at Graceland, yeah, absolutely. If we can also wing it so that they can stay at Graceland, that'd be great. And then um, just like hanging out with them, letting them meet like the rest of the community. It is such like a great community that goes to Graceland and, and the Hero amount Clicks of people general, that but, you end up like you know staying in contact with like i know personally like i probably met 20 people that i now have like such a better relationship with you know that i'd previously like only seen them online or maybe vice versa yeah and yeah it's it's so cool to finally put like a face to a lot of the teams that you see or you know the videos that they post like regardless of who it is it's it's just awesome and so giving somebody an opportunity who would never have that opportunity like i also would be in the same boat of like not in my right mind am I going to spend, like, you know, $2,000 to go play Hero Clicks. No. But I'd spend $500. i would spend 1000 you know. Yeah. So, I mean, like, cutting yeah. that cost, like, shaving it in half or more, seriously. It's really... This it's is a just difference maker. Making it, like, as accessible to these players as it is to, like, American players. It's, you know, instead of, yeah, instead of, like, a two grand bill, you're looking at maybe a hotel and then food for a couple days. And that's, you know, time off from work, that kind of thing. Whereas for, like, an American player, you know, we drove, so it, I don't know what gas came out to, but, like, maybe a couple hundred. Yeah. And then, you know, hotel and stuff like that, like, it doesn't come out to a whole lot for us because there's just a lot fewer barriers. Mm -hmm. But making it, like, the same kind of, bar like, 
not barrier less, but uh, close to lessening it. Yeah, you know? lessening the the burden. Yeah. Also, it would be so cool if we could if we hit the three thousand dollar mark and we were able to fly three international players out and then put them on a team for team. Oh, th- yeah, man. And then kind of do Clicks. like you know a documentary of their their team. That'd be Seals awesome. Event. Yeah. I mean, Similar to how we followed the chainsaw chads, it would be you know that'd be great. Be so cool to do that. So another thing that I do want to highlight just very quickly about the IPF, and then I'll be done, <laughs> is that one hundred percent. Yes, one hundred percent. You heard that correctly. One zero zero percent sign. One hundred percent of your donations go to the IPF. We do not keep a dollar of it. We pay for all the shipping, for all the prizing ourselves. Everything Wait, we do. That means we're taking. A loss. We're taking on a some loss. Of this? That's right. Wait a second, but <laughs> we could totally just take some of the money they donated and use that to ship their items. But we're still not going to do that. You know, Calder, we could. We could also take executive costs and things like that. But obviously, um, wow, the money we raised for charity is actually going to go to the charity it's for. Yeah, it's crazy. That's one hundred percent. Wow, that's amazing, guys. So, yeah, we're not technically a nonprofit, but we are going to be the most transparent about this as we possibly can outside of literally sharing my uh, financial like stuff. I will You'll be... see Simeon's bank account. <laughs> you actually You'll get will. his routing number. Well, not that. I'm but, just kidding. But you will actually see a, at the end <laughs> of this. He's not time. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, no social security card or anything, but you will see a screenshot. You'll also see like the PayPal transaction. So what, what fundraiser sends me, what the PayPal like amount gets to and then what paypal eventually sends to the account the All price of, of the plane shared. ticket the purchase of the plane ticket the then, plane ticket like authorization to the players who win yeah all of that you will see uh if you want to also mentioned <laughs> any like leftover money that we managed to raise and doesn't get directly used this year is just going to be rolled over to the like it's going to stay in the account essentially and be rolled over towards next year so next year we'll just start hopefully not having to use fundraiser Hopefully, it'll just be direct donations. That'd be awesome. But uh, it'll just be rolled over, and that'll be a little money in the bank for next year's IPF. Yeah. Fantastic. And we do have a lot planned for next year. We don't need to go into that, but next year's IPF, bigger, badder than ever. So, biggest thing, guys, all the money's going straight to charity. We're not taking any of it for any reason. And then also, April, we're saying 28th. 29th somewhere in there is going to be our potential live yeah, stream so it'll be the last friday or saturday of april we will have probably more lockdown dates posted this week but preemptively i think that's what we're deciding yeah. unless we're just like missing a big event that's happening that weekend like that's the big thing i want to yeah. plan around yeah. i don't want to have it going on while there's you know something arguably more important yeah, we don't want to compete <laughs> with people's attention or i didn't realize we were fighting with wrestlemania yesterday yeah I honestly <laughs> I was a bad wrestling fan yesterday i didn't realize but it was only the first night, even though the first like, night was better than the second night. I feel like when we did the 400th episode, we were also We were fighting. also competing with WrestleMania yeah. during episode 400. We're bad wrestling fans. <laughs> we were terrible. Nah, it's WWE. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, but all right, let's go ahead and jump into some listener questions from the show. There are dozens of us. Dozens! Guys, all these listener questions are from our Discord. And if you want to join our Discord, you can join our Patreon. I'm not going to do a huge Patreon plug because I'd rather have you donate any money to Patreon to, again, the IPF. I want to I wanna read the first question. Yeah, you can go ahead and read the first question. It's actually from me. <laughs> what would you do with 60 Brainiac Lex Luthers? Wow. That's tough. That's really tough. Simeon, I mean, 60 is a big number. That's of yeah. one figure. Um, I think how, give them away. I houses think. have been made out of less, so you can really build a lot on 60 Brainiac Lex Luthers. Um, yeah, yeah, we are just <laughs> going to find ways to yeah. give them away. Uh, we have a few people running in-person tournaments, and so we're letting them use some of these for prizing for those tournaments to get more people in, and then, assumedly, they're going to donate to the IPF, whatever the entry costs and stuff. So this is just easing the burden of yeah. them providing their own prizing and all that, which is awesome. Um, we made a lot of memes with them. We stacked them a bunch of times. We too. did. Yeah, stacked we stacked them. We covered Luke in them. Yeah, yep. we covered Luke. <laughs> I put them in my cupboard and I opened it up so that way you could only see Brainiac and Lex Luthers. I thought that was really funny. And yeah, <laughs> we pretend to crack open a Brainiac and Lex Luthor every once in a while. Yeah. A little ktss, something real, real refreshing. Mom, can we have prizing? We have prizing at home. <laughs> <No. laughs> uh, I'm gonna skip that one. Sixty Brainiac Lex Luthers. 
And then Alex asks, now this kind of goes off of a few weeks ago, if you could design a monthly OP kit, what would you do? You have to pick two old sculpts and then come up with one new sculpt. And then maybe one other game element, legacy card, team up card, mystery card, etc. So what would you guys do if you were in charge of making a monthly OP kit? Well, I think the OP kit I would design is Great Lakes Avengers. The new sculpt, 100%, would be Mr. Immortal. I would love to see one, maybe in a similar light of the Captain America and Avengers. Or not, sorry, just Captain America set. Yep. Um, where he's standing in front of those TNT barrels, but maybe in this one he's, like, exploding. That would be really funny. <laughs> That'd be kind of cool. Uh, for a re-sculpt, you could grab a Hawkeye, take your pick. Probably the more, like, colorful one from uh, Avengers 60th. I really like the colors that you've oh, sure. that. And then for the third choice... I know we're reusing sculpts. There's not really another Great Lakes Avenger in modern that has like the big sculpt. But I think reusing uh, Squirrel Girl sculpt from either the, the same Captain America set or um, the Deadpool and the X Force set. And then for an additional object or team up card, I think a Great Lakes Avengers team up card would be pretty cool. I don't know what it would do. Any ideas there, Calder? The, the ATA, maybe, as a trait? Okay, yeah, yeah, that could be cool. That could, that bring, could work. Bring back the ATA for the Great Lakes Avengers. Um, they've done that a handful of times with team-up cards. They've kind of used the ATA just for it. So that could be a neat ability. You could do something where... Maybe something like, wait, you'll actually work with us? You and can choose would be somebody like, that doesn't have a keyword. In, there yeah, you go. Like you know, they're just... If you guys have read any of that, they're always hurting for... Uh, for members. For members. For anything. And they, even like the lamest heroes blow them off. <laughs> yeah, it's really, it's really, maybe, really sad. Maybe, uh, maybe give a team up card to one of them that gives them access to the Quinjetta. Like if you play the team up card, they can carry four people. There you Ooh. go. So it's like to the Quinjetta. I think that'd be kind of fun. <laughs> That's my favorite thing. In that, that, that is comic. a hilarious line. Uh, the fact that they also just like sit around and play cards for a majority of the time yeah. when they're like not doing superhero they're stuff. Like you like flip the panel and it goes to like a Volkswagen logo and it like zooms out. It's like yeah, this is this is it, guys. This is <laughs> like, it. It's so good. But that that'd be uh, my choice. I'd love to see a new Mister Immortal or for him to get a legacy card. Really anything. Just give us the GLA, please. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm all for the GLA. So I really I really like that pick. New Mister Immortal or even legacy Mister Immortal would be amazing. Uh, my OP kit. I would really like to see you could reuse the sculpt for U.S. Agent from the Avengers Forever. So we're using that sculpt, right? And then we're going to reuse the sculpt of Captain America from Secret Wars Battle World. So that's going to be World War II Captain America with his triangle shield. And then this OP kit is going to be the Captain America Corps, which is a comic in like 2007, 2006. Sometime when Captain America, like 616 Cap, was like dead after Civil War. And it was U.S. Agent Bucky, so Bucky Cap, World War II Captain America, so from back in time, brought to the future. And then the last two members was the American Dream and then I believe the great, 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 great grandson off in the future of Isaiah Bradley, who was president in that universe. So those are the two figures. The two that have never been clicked is going to be American Dream or the great, great, great grandson of Isaiah Bradley. I would take either one. I'd prefer American Dream. So we have like the like the A2 universe brought in. I think that'd be really funny. So that's who I want the new sculpt to be with World War II cap being a re-sculpt, US agent being a re-sculpt. And then the legacy card... Uh, would be Bucky Cap from Fear Itself. Because, man, he would be an awesome legacy card. We haven't got Bucky as Captain America literally in 10 years since Fear Itself happened. So I would love to see him come back as Captain America. And that would be a really, really fun legacy card. And if we wanted to do a mystery card, they do try to solve the mystery of why, like, someone's deleting Steve Rogers from across multiple universes. That could also be a mystery card, but I think a Bucky Cap legacy would be 100% what i choose. But what would you make, Simeon, for an OP kit? So, <clears throat> I don't, I, like, obviously I would lean towards, like, some X-Men thing, but I decided to pick some, like, characters that I actually really like, um, really like the sculpt of, really like the characters, and I would just really like to see them back in, like, hero clicks in a new form and technically one of these or yeah one of these is still modern right now but uh i would re-sculpt the Ares, if not the convention one then like the the one from wonder woman i think is an awesome sculpt okay it's got his big old sword and his armor um so it'd be a deity pack essentially like, right. a, like a wonder woman-esque dc deity kind of thing so Ares would be the like one of the re-sculpts another one would be from the superman and wonder woman set 
uh, the Hades on his little throne. His like tiny little dude with candles okay, on his yeah, head. Yeah, little yeah. creepy guy with his two bystanders. Um, I don't hate the Hades that they made in Wonder Woman. But other than He's the point cost, not it's super great. Yeah, other than the point cost, it's worse in every way than the uh, the Superman Wonder Woman one. Like it just is the the tortured souls, like or whatever the heroic souls. Though, if you could spit those out, like I remember playing him in a like six hundred point game where it was like a battle royal, and so by the end of like I don't know whatever turn. Everybody had lost at least one character that was over like a hundred points, and I had like seven of these heroic souls that all nice. have prob, like <laughs> super nice. strength. Nice. I can't remember, but like they're just nuts to have like a ton of, and that's what made me really like that character. And then he also just has like crazy other stuff like mastermind, and, like I don't know. He's pretty solid. Yeah, I uh, played him a bit when he was legal. Yeah, he was just too many points. Yeah, he wasn't particularly mobile either. <laughs> yeah, they all that's one so one of my biggest things. But he wasn't easy to crack either. Like Yeah. He was he was like close to fringe. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's the thing. I can't remember who I played him with that was like a mastermind just like sync and I would use like that character to or no, maybe it was I think I was doing a team where everyone was on throne, so it was like Chair Panther and he had mastermind. Oh, and I was okay, masterminding sure. Chair Panther to the souls or whatever. I always loved his sculpt. Yeah. It was a great sculpt. That's another one, even though it would cross universes. That is another one I would love to see re sculpt. Uh, my new sculpt, because I think we've only gotten like two in the last little bit, and that would be Zeus, would be the re sculpt. So okay. we have the convention Zeus, which was an awesome sculpt. And He's then still so hard to find. Isn't so that Marvel Zeus, the con convention? No, it's Zeus. DC Zeus. Oh, is yeah. it DC Zeus? Okay. Yeah, he's in like his purple costume with like the arc light. I thought he had like him. orange yeah. hair or something in that one. It was such when a When that figure good released, sculpt. it was like, did this get released? Yeah. And then mm. like years later, I mean, if you eBay him right now, like, I don't know, I'll do it live. Simeon, keep talking, sorry. Do it yeah, live. I'll, I, I'll be back. I don't even know much about his dial because I just lost hope of ever getting one. Uh, the one from Wonder Woman 80th is the rare is fine. I just don't like the sculpt as much. I really do like that dial, but yeah, his this, sculpt yeah, is the lacking. Dial's great, but uh, the sculpt is just kind of meh. Uh, and this is oh, better. I, he, I think so. I oh. think he good. came out in 2017, so he's like twenty dollars now. But okay. I remember for for years, you couldn't find this guy because I was like, I kind of want him. He's really cool. Yeah, that one's like very Mount Olympusy, but he doesn't scream oh, Zeus. I don't to know. Me he looks he looks very. He's just royal, got like very kingly. That I don't thing. think that's better. But like Zeus holds mm -hmm. lightning bolts. That guy's he's got his he's got his staff thing. Whatever. Yeah, you know Zeus what he's known for what he's known for. Thing. Big staff guy, Zeus. Um, and then my, I would do a team up card for deity that says like something along the lines of characters that can use phasing have like free move like four squares or something like that oh wow so like characters that like or That's characters cool. can use phasing if they already have it they can um move four squares for free because i'm tired of like so many deities just having like these inflated point costs and then phasing yeah. top dial as if that's like what I want. So, on they, a high so they become the Serpent Society. Yeah, you have a free phase four Basically, and they can attack. Yeah, the Deity Society. Um, nice. <laughs> but alternatively, uh, like maybe if you could do something oh, with a nice lightning bolt uh, team up card where like you give them some sort of protected outwit because there's a disgusting amount of deity characters where like the deity like should be a reserved keyword for people that are literal gods in their universe. And they don't have like quintessence or I guess just cosmic energy, whatever. And now. then Amanda Waller comes and says like, "All right, case closed." Yeah. <laughs> hey, Aries, it's cool. You're like the god of war, or whatever. But uh, I'm getting rid of your impervious. Like, yeah, you're a loser, bro. And then uh, if I had to legacy one, um, I would go with the Super Booster Trigon because dang, we, yeah. we haven't gotten any DC two by twos. And I know a lot of people were disappointed that he wasn't in the Batman team upset. Such a such an awesome sculpt. And it's cool. uh, if you can find one that's not broken. You like, hated pulling him at the time, though, because, I mean, you weren't getting Justice League or Villains for Hire. Yeah. But he is an awesome <laughs> sculpt. All the skulls. Yeah, he is cool. And then, yeah, just, I don't know what we'd do with his dial, what would happen with that. But uh, Only 15 clicks alive? Maybe he'd kind of be like... Uh, hmm. Remember how Dormammu, that prize one for know. three dice? This little, yeah. this little click looks pretty pretty good for a uh, <laughs> retail click, I'd say. Oh, yeah, that... Well, that's a little retail yeah, option like last right there. Click, click, uh, a little special defense. 15. Maybe he'll have a little bit of a... Uh, old school stop. 
But yeah, uh, yeah, you could just they could just make that actual stop now, and um, maybe if he interacted with like terrain in some way because he is like kind of like interdimensional in a way. Yeah, a little, little colossal like, indifference, special defense, stuff, yeah. or make free attacks through like using terrain around. Uh, generate his own like the. Uh, Fing Fang Foom can. Ah, of course. There you he go. whose limbs shatter and scrapes mountains. mountains. His back <laughs> who scrapes the sun. Whose His feet... back who is horribly lined and he needs to see a chiropractor. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that'd be that'd be my. So I had uh, yeah it's two Zeus sculpts or yeah. new sculpt uh, legacy and then what my team up kind of. Okay, thing right be. on. All right, next question we have is going to be Tyler M. asks, what are you guys thinking slash hoping for the convention exclusives this year? We haven't seen any of them. I think, have we seen? We would have seen some this time last year because Scott Porter did that live stream and he showed off the Fantastic Four last year. So Uh we are kind of getting into that that part of the year where we should be able to see these pretty soon. So I don't know. At least some of them. Well, I've always been a fan of when they release convention exclusives that may be like complimented a set that came out prior in the year yeah. or like it's an obscure character that maybe didn't make the main set. Okay. You know, like when they made like Robbie Reed in the H dial. Yeah. I thought that was really cool. That was awesome. Like the, the more obscure the character is for con exclusives, I think the better. But then at the same time, it is always really cool throwback to see like the, the 2013 like Dr. Fate. Uh, yeah. Who was floating in front of the Mystic Sign. The, uh, the Agent Venom. Oh, yeah. That was a highlight Hot con colors. exclusive. Superman and Superman was even cool, and I don't even really like Superman. Yeah, Superman, Superman kissing on the on the but sculpt, then, right? You had the stuff like Obnoxio the Clown, you know? He oh, was yeah. funny. <laughs> Dupe, Dupe, Dupe the, was powerful. Dupe yeah, on the dude. motorcycle, crazy. Too. Oh yeah, Dupe on the motorcycle. Spider yeah, Ham. Spider Ham. Yeah, Spider Ham jumping over a fire hydrant. I like the Cap Sentinel. Supreme Intelligence was huge. Spidey and his amazing friends. That was just funny. Spidey and his amazing friends. Just a hilarious team base. You know, I I I know it won't happen. Very, very unlikely it won't happen, but it would be really cool to see. So they did, like, you know, the Batman team up with Scooby Doo, right? Yeah. Mm. It would be cool to see some of the other people that the Mystery Gang teamed up with in the Scooby Doo show. The, the Harlem know, Globetrotters? I suggested the Harlem, <laughs> Harlem Globetrotters, Globetrotters team base. I know it's like way, it's way. <laughs> oh, um, gosh. Gosh. I think it's like way newer than like Batman team up with Scooby Doo and stuff, but the. WWE episode is pretty hilarious. That would be great. Yeah. Um, this is how we get WWE back in the game. Yeah, I think they still just teamed up with like John Cena or something yeah. during that just too. Though yet another John Cena third, convention exclusive. Third John Cena. Yay! In in like an actual guess, I would not be surprised if we saw some kind of like variant Batman yeah. with the Batman set coming out. Yeah, uh, Batman being a popular character. It's always a safe. You thing, know, yeah. the Batman who laughs is just more popular than ever. So if that was like a con exclusive, that wouldn't shock me. But some variant Batman with just kind of the comeback of this year, that would probably be like my top pick for Marvel. Batman of Zero and R. Oh, I loved him. He was so fun. <laughs> We haven't seen one. I don't. Have we seen one in here? It looks, yeah. I think it's just been. He a was long a prize time. kit. Yeah. In um, in the Batman set. Um, all of the to me, all the convention exclusives that came out this last year felt like they should have come out a year before with the Wonder kind of Woman one, it. with the Fantastic Four ones. They all feel felt more related to sets that happened the year before. Yeah. So I'm hoping we get sets from last year. So I would love uh, Battlestar from Disney Plus. We're not going to get Battlestar, of course not. But some cool things that were I think were missing from Disney Plus would be really cool to get as a convention exclusive. My number one, obviously, Battlestar. But if we got a Wanda WandaVision duo where they're gray, yeah. that would be really cool. Yes, so dude. the fact that we didn't get a duo of them and they've kind of figured out how to make duos oh, work please, now. Please so do that. That, that would, would be, be so right? cool, <laughs> Wouldn't that be dude. tight? So I think that would be really cool. Like during the talent show? Yeah. Episode, it could be that something like that. Duo, that yeah. would be so cool. A flying effect with a little piece of gum. Dude, <laughs> yes. Oh, gosh, that'd be really good. I think War of the Realms, they use so little figures and characters Punisher. from the actual War of the Realms storyline. Yeah. Punisher would be great. Please. Yeah, he was great in War of the Realms. He Please. leads a, a band of, like, criminals to help save some people, which, you know, Punisher kind of does Punisher things to them by the end of the, the story, but it's cool. He could pop out some bystanders that help him out and stuff, so, like... There was a lot of unused stuff from War of the Realms. I don't know anything about Ten of Swords. I feel like they flushed out that pretty well, but there's they're probably missing some stuff that I, they could throw in. I don't yeah. Know. 
between the OP and the main set, I I think they got most um, of it. Avengers Forever had so little from actually Avengers Forever. So Good now that kid. now that we know yeah. that we're making Thing, Please. I'd like to see Wonder Man. Like that'd be really tight. The oh, all sure. pale Wonder Man that was also like hanging oh, yeah. out with Thing and stuff. We are getting the cosmic thing though. The Infinity exactly, Stone yeah. Thing so and getting the getting cosmic thing makes me hope we get more Weird from the actual Avengers Forever storyline. We didn't get any of the villains from that storyline. We just got really we just got Ant Man yes. and and See, who just all Ghost those Rider. Are so cool. Yeah. Too. Like any of those villains would be great. Uh, I would love to see Man Thing, Doctor Doom. Uh, Short lived as he is, <laughs> he's really cool, really funny. Their ego, Doctor Doom. Yeah, he gets he gets teed up. <laughs> Yeah, dude. He, he gets that's what I'm saying. He gets yeah, up. Yeah, he that's, is the that truth. the way to use it? Uh, so, yeah, those would be really cool convention exclusives, <laughs> I think. I don't know, Simeon, what are you, what are you hoping to see? Uh, we did get, so just judging off of what we've gotten before, like we did get the heavy metal, whatever you want to call her, Wonder Woman. Oh, yeah. Uh, there should be a Batman and Superman that complement that at some point. Okay. I would imagine. I'd be um, cool with that. If they like, don't ever come out. Also, like if we do get Battlestar, I think it'll only be possible if it's a duo with John. It would, yeah. It's the only way yeah, they like, they wouldn't use Battlestar as a convention exclusive because yeah. he would have been if like they an did uncommon duos only. Like that'd be awesome. I, just, I love just that the black duos. And white WandaVision idea. Wouldn't that be tight? Yeah, that'd be really cool. I would, so they did a legacy for Thor's Mighty Chariot. They did the Punisher van as a convention exclusive from the Punisher like War Journal of War of the Realms okay. or whatever. The yeah, the goats strapped to his to van. To his van. Oh, oh my gosh. It'd be hilarious as like a convention exclusive. That'd be gnarly. Uh, especially if they could do the same kind of effect where like the goats are flying and the van's like and he's trailing behind. Out the it. back, right? Uh he's like on top of the hood or something? No, they've got so at one point he's I don't know, it goes through changes throughout it, but at I one thought point. There's like he, a panel where they're flying and then the back doors he has like a friggin' turret poking out the back oh, of the that'd be maybe. cool that'd be tight it's possible I, it's that'd been be a while since I've read it oh <laughs> obviously we need uh, Scourge's Omega Gun ship as a con oh, exclusive yeah. so, <laughs> can't uh, forget about that yeah Beta Ray Bill that was from uh, Beta Ray Bill um, that's, one of his newest runs that's where, War of the Realms Thor related enough yeah, to get a con LE Scuttlebutt like mm. Turn, like that's those, the name of the ship. They go to like literal Asgardian hell or whatever, and so, Scuttlebutt so like hell. dips into like lava, and for some reason that activates some sort of weird power that that ship now mode. has because it's a sentient ship. But like now it can reform mm. itself, so it does like the whole Cortana thing where it like makes itself a body, which is like cool for a little while. <laughs> and then at one point she makes a literal spaceship sized gun. And she's like, oh. Scourge, you're the only one who can use this gun. And he just, like, kind of cries like a happy tear. He's yeah. like, it's so beautiful because it's, like, the size <laughs> of a skyscraper. And he literally shoots a hole Scourge through. Scourge is probably, like, the only Asgardian that's used a firearm before, also, though. Also, Ray any... Bill with the uh, Midnight Sword would be oh, awesome. Dude, there you that's... go. Just give us, give us all the Beta Ray Bill. Yeah. He's my, he's my favorite. I mean, he's not technically an Asgardian, is he? He kind of is, though. He, uh, the, he gets the, like, yeah. So He's, he's worthy. He's yeah, he's worthy, and then like Odin does just like straight up. Make speaking of speaking of Bill, we need William the Warrior. If we're getting Thor stuff, I still don't understand what this is from. But the giant size Thor, Bill, Bill aka like William like, the Warrior, that looks like a Super Smash Bros. character, right? He's literally a dude with a baseball cap. Is that not just just uh, a over just the a top? guy? That's literally just over the top Stallone with like a cloak on. <laughs> and look at this. It's great. Like what? You know he's not going Why? down with his hats what about, backwards. What about like uh so we we got the Phoenix Sentinel and what did we get for a DC two by two, did we? Didn't, didn't we? <sighs> I don't think we did last yeah, year. Just the just the Phoenix Sentinel. Fulcum a while ago, but yeah. yeah Fulcum, sure. Uh <sighs> other than a, a gunship the size of a skyscraper. It would be pretty tough. <laughs> What's a was there anything was there anybody big in like the Avengers Forever storyline or maybe in like Batman that they could bring? I, I say we get that giant monster from Scooby Doo Two, uh, oh giant Scrappy or something. Make him giant the two by two, scrappy. yeah, okay, yeah two by two. Then he actually yeah. has seven damage, like <laughs> yes. for real, dude. Yes, it's like that Skull Island or whatever that movie was. Yeah, what make about that. The Disney Plus shows. Was there anything like giant in that? Man. This is so wild, but imagine the old school Loki with his giant projection of the city. That's oh, that'd be gone. tight. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'd like that that'd a lot. I guess from that same episode, what's his name? Zephaniah or something? Who's Zerathos? Who's the cloud guy? Oh, the, the evil the cloud, cloud in the void. Yeah, I, yeah. Don't, I don't remember it at all. It could be a thing. It's like, yeah. 
They go to like the pruned world. I don't remember his name. doesn't know the, no, the I don't smoke remember cloud. His name. I don't remember I don't either. Remember what he looks like. Smoke cloud Loki. What is it? Loki. Oh, they have so many smoke. options. The con exclusives. I won't lie. Last year did feel a bit lackluster. Alioth. I love Spider. -Man. Alioth. Yeah, I was not going to remember that. But he's no. kind of got a lion face. He's, Panther. He's got like a weird skull face thing uh, that comes out of the smoke. Yeah, something. Um. Yeah. He could be. He could be a thing. Yeah. We could also. I mean, we've had some movies come out. We've had. Uh, yeah, we didn't get any Kang at all yeah, in no Kang uh, the Disney whatsoever. Plus. But um, obviously we did get plenty of Kangs in Avengers Forever. So we did, yeah. We Lots. got quite a bit of Kang. Uh, but I could see I could see more Kang coming Kang, down the pipeline. Uh, whatever, totally the cool one who that. knows, sitting there eating his apple yeah. at the end of Loki. <laughs> oh, oh, you yeah. get a giant Miss Minutes at the end of Loki. Oh, yeah. She oh. was like, hey, yeah. <laughs> Just a huge Miss Minutes. A two by two Miss Minutes. <laughs> On the DC side of things, what does I DC mean, get? If we got man. our pick, I I know what we would pick. It I want the lantern two, two by two twos. lantern yeah. construct yep. baller. I want the Just Kyle Rayner in a mech. I want Kyle, Kyle Jordan Rainer in, in the a fighter pilot. Construct Michael Jordan Duncan. <laughs> <laughs> John Stewart can have like a crane or something, and then obviously Guy has to have a monster truck with a Mustang. Like I want, I want the main lanterns with giant two by two constructs be so funny. What if they did like the the old lantern packs where it was like you got two lanterns and then some of the constructs. What if they did that except it was just a whole new set of Nowadays, constructs for each color? If yo, I mean I. Wow, those rings are already so good. These, these yeah, constructs are, are so good. I don't. I would love also, to see. Like, obviously, if every color got one more that was specific to their color, I'd be okay with I it. I think that would be really cool. We still need the Yellow Lantern shotgun. I really want that construct <laughs> so bad. <laughs> but yeah. I think there's, we gave a pretty all fleshed out stuff. answer for this. Yeah, I think so. There's, a ton, of, there's a ton of good stuff for convention exclusives. So if you guys want to send us in what you would make for a OP kit or what you want to have for a convention exclusive, write us in at Dial H for Hero Clicks, Facebook.com, uh, Dial H for at gmail.com. It's an at sign, little Dial H F O R E. Same thing on Twitter. You can go ahead and message us on any of those and let us know what you want for convention exclusives or what you would do for an OP kit where you have to make one new sculpt and then two old sculpts and whatnot. Last question here from March the Dogwins. Uh, should Symbio be a team ability? For example, characters in range, subtract one for shape change and super senses. If so, how would you make it? Uh, no, I don't think it should be a team ability, actually. No. I think it would be a dumb idea. I think, <laughs> I think, I think you I think were stupid for saying that. Well, like we saw the, the symbiote trait, you know, previously it was yeah. shape change plasticity. Essentially a shared and then thing, like a team ability. It became super sensitive plasticity with the range thing, where if you're within four, you can't target with them with range attacks. So... I, I don't understand why that's a symbiote thing where they can't be targeted by range. Like, what about Venom's... Like, why does it do that? I don't yeah. know. I love it. They just great blend game. in. Yeah. But uh, I think that that is fine enough. I don't think it needs to be another team ability. Like, I, I don't think there's, like, enough symbiote characters to, like, justify the team ability. I think a better question would be, should Sinister Syndicate, like Batman Enemy, just become, like, Spider-Man Enemy? Oh, sure. Yeah. So, like, instead of only being applied to characters that would be Sinister Syndicate, should it just be characters that are... And I mean, everyone's basically a Spider-Man enemy. Yeah. Everyone that's, like, a bad guy in Marvel, like, doesn't like Spider-Man. Kind of, yeah. But you could, like, make it more applicable to just his rogues. Because most of them already fit that, but mm -hmm. if it was just... I would say, yeah, most enemy, symbiotes do just kind of fit the Sinister Syndicate vibe. I think if you were going to go, like, you know, it's like, say the trait for the symbiote isn't enough... I think the route that you would take with Symbiote, just because it is like more niche, you know, there's not that many characters who are Symbiote. I think you'd want to do like some team up cards. Yeah. Which Good. is like maybe, you know, like the when you play the Symbiotes together, they're stronger or whatever. So they Yeah, they're like their shape change is boosted by one or super something sense like is boosted that, by yeah. one. Uh, any blades roll is like increased by minimum one. result of sure. the highest damage figure on your board. That's what I'd be okay with because we're just so far gone from all the symbiotes they've already made in the past. Because like the keyword, they added that. Sure, I would really hate for them to add a team ability that is either just like symbiotic fusion or yeah, something. They did the codex to symbiote? Jump. You know, so it was like that already felt bad and kind of yeah. sucked. You know, it did. It and so work. now it's like, oh man, all the old venoms and 
cool symbiotes from Deadpool and the X Force to 15th anniversary to Earth X, whatever, are just way, way. These keep getting worse and worse and worse because they're adding keywords, adding team abilities. Symbiote team ability is Marvel's answer to the Green Lantern team ability. No, that doesn't make sense. Every symbiote no, can now carry eight like characters. I don't like that. I don't like that. Yeah, it's just like, ah, I coded you all on goo, and now here we go. <laughs> goo, goo, and away. Goo now. <laughs> goo, goo, and away. Yikes, dude. Uh, Here's my symbiote drop off cool. team with my six characters that can carry eight characters. <laughs> Jeez. But all on right. that subject, we do need a Marvel version of whatever that. I don't know who. A it Green would Lantern? To. We don't need. It really doesn't no. even make sense for Green Lanterns, but it doesn't. Well, it made sense yeah, for like Hal Jordan Green yeah, Lantern. It does make a big bubble, carry him around, but he doesn't carry eight at a time. It he makes sense for the, the JLA. Well, like, I don't know. I like it. I don't, Could it be changed? I like or, it. It I'm makes just, sense. But I, I don't think it makes as much sense for Green Lanterns. as like It could make just as much sense for something in Marvel. I just don't know what. Like Fair. Somebody with a van, like a Punisher skull. <laughs> the car team ability. Punisher, <laughs> Punisher's thing is not trucking people around, though. Who, who in Marvel's thing is trucking people around? Uh, I mean, there's Manifold, you know? there's... Uh... All right, update the X-Men team ability. They, they got the Blackbird. Yeah, just make the X-Men team ability carry eight. How's that sound? Or I Avengers. Hate, I hate I mean, this. They, they use the... Uh, <laughs> You're right, Quinjet. Yeah, Avengers. Quinjet. Everybody just has the Quinjet yeah, with right. them. That just <laughs> makes sense. Yeah. I mean, it makes as much sense as, like, a Green Lantern constantly being no, used as a No, it does attack. not. What? Dude, you're not printing out keys to the Quinjet. For <laughs> yeah, and oh, geez. Green Lanterns don't just taxi people around. That's yes, not their they function. Do. That's all how Jordan does in uh, like early watch Justice Watch the JLA League. animated TV show. I guarantee you at some point. AKA read all John Stewart, Stewart does. John Stewart's floating around with everybody in the bubble. Read a comic book. Watch any animated show with any Green Lantern all in right. it. They're going to do that. <laughs> I, I guess I'll watch some animated Blackest series Knight? instead of paying guarantee attention to source happened. material. Mm. Oh, source material. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the thing Dude, these are based it on. It makes sense. The Green Lantern team ability could be anything and it would make sense because it's like, oh yeah, they can do that with their rings. <laughs> yeah. You arguing about this making sense? Anyway, no, I'm, I'm arguing Rita about <laughs> them being used as taxis makes very little sense because that's not their main function. I would be okay if it got changed to a bonus to willpower. But I'd be okay with that as well. The carry the ring already does makes that now, so. it's, sense. It's it such a. Could it make more? It's well, like the willpower you. modifier. <laughs> plus I never one. said it doesn't make sense. I'm saying it Somebody makes as much sense. Replay as... Replay the episode here, please. Yep. Oh, yeah. It makes as much sense as. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, Marvel should have a a version of that. It Avengers. makes just as much sense. Like, <laughs> and here's your key it does. I, I agree with you in the way saying that both Marvel and DC should have the same. Like in War of the Light, like, <laughs> Hal Jordan wasn't like, "Come on, John Stewart, I'll carry you over here because that's what I do." They were both flying on their own and shooting lasers. Okay. Well, at yeah. Batman. Now you're talking about Green Lantern on Green Lantern action. I'm talking about the comic books. Uh, yeah, well, that they're... these are based on. Okay. Well, in Hero Clicks, how often are you playing a Green Lantern with another Green Lantern? Almost never. Well, yeah, because they don't like really benefit <laughs> each don't, other. They don't release. I would run them. a Green Lantern theme team if I could equip them all with rings and yeah, you know. I wish, but I don't, this is the team ability that should become Green Lantern. We should bring more locks back. <laughs> yeah, close, close combat. See, this this Morlock's, Morlock's team ability is what I feel like the symbiote team ability would be. Where it was would like. Be. Did we have to do that? Yeah. Yeah. It's unnecessary. How many Morlocks were they pumping out that they needed a team of? <laughs> oh, man. Ultimate set had all the all these cool yeah, Morlocks, they... bro. It had Morlock. It had Callisto. Had Johnny. Had Morlock leader. <laughs> Who could that be? Uh, and then, was that the only set Morlocks was, yes, was, was in? Was. Yeah, it was. Yep. That was also the same set that the... Uh... The Serpent Society. Serpent Society also had a team ability for, for a hot second. Ultimates. Got to hand out mm. the Serpent Society team ability. Did it make it to Fantastic... It did make it to Fantastic Forces and then died in Captain America and never came <laughs> back. For one one additional character. Yeah, got two it. whole sets and then also Asp. Dude, you got you got to remember how dope Sidewinder was. <laughs> oh, Sidewinder's the king, phasing. bro. We still don't have... A modern Sidewinder. This is our only version of Sidewinder. These three Sidewinders and Heroclix. And he's the leader of the Serpent Society. Did it's we, ridiculous. No, never mind. Shut up, shut up. Yeah, okay. yeah, we did. We did get a Sidewinder. Say, yep. No, you're right. Was yeah, it Captain that, America? That was wide Sinder. Also for like 35 points. That was points. Wide Sinder. <laughs> oh, 30 points. 30 points. Yeah. Also 12. He's still just a carry guy. 
Kind of. You carry five. Yeah, I carry five people. Look at the sidewinder go. He's practically a Green Lantern. Yeah, right. King Snake and Serpent Society. Hey, there you go. That's what we do. Bring, bring, bring Serpent Society back. <laughs> Make him the new Green Lantern ability. Uh, uh, but all right, guys, that is it for the episode. Quick reminder, we have a link to the IPF. If you want to donate to help get an international player over to America for Worlds, you can do so. We're already at $1,415. We want to get $3,000, and any extra we get is going to go over next year or help pay for this year. So please, please consider donating to the International Player Foundation. And if you're not just donating to the Player Foundation, uh, maybe check out this website called CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff uh, like the latest HeroClix singles and sealed products. Make sure to check them out at CoolStuffInc.com, and make sure to use code DIAL5 when you do. Uh, Paul Cote walked away with our $100, $100 gift, card gift card for Cool Stuff, Inc. coming in third. So that was a pretty good third-place prize. And uh, you, too, can buy stuff there just by going to the website. Happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero clicks now. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like, 100 instant dead pain of humor. Over oh, they, uh, six oh, people learn. think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. You absolute fools. I'm going to be able to edit that out. Sure. That's cool because it's expensive. I'm going to make Hero Clips like that forever. 